Thank you all for that. Now we've postponed the uh, woman's in induction. <laughs> Man, I got a, a text from Deanna, and I just I have to say this, you know, because I'm always looking for good material. And I've, I've, got a, I've got a couple of stories I'd like to share, but we have a video for that, but I, I want to introduce the video. Deanna sent me maybe a text or an email saying, when, when am I going? What's it going to be like? I think I'm going to puke. <laughs> and I responded, so you can fly 15 feet in the air with seven people around you trying to gun you down, and this is what makes you nervous? <laughs> I am proud to introduce a video inducting Deanna into the uh, Hall of Fame. Let's roll the video first. That one defining moment, it was the late summer of 1985, and GTT manager Doc Schofield flew in their fastest girl racer to Southern California for a very special occasion. The entire blue and yellow factory squad piled into the GT van and headed to the world famous Orange Y track for a special bike test and photo shoot with BMX Action Magazine. Once geared up, Deanna proceeded to hang with her older male teammates, skying the orange doubles with style to spare. That particular day, in front of the camera of Wendy Osborne, she displayed the speed and skills that had won her a JAG World Championship, a couple of Murray World Awards, and eventually six straight NBL number one rankings and Grands wins. No other female ever participated in a BMX action test before then or after. With over 100 national class wins between 1980 and 88, Deanna set the bar and set it high for all girl BMX racers of the future. Please give a warm welcome to your 2014 woman inductee, Deanna Edwards Jameson. There's a light here, which is really good. So, anyways, I want to thank everybody. First of all, the USA and BMX and the National BMX Hall of Fame. This is a huge honor to be here tonight to share this award with my fellow inductees. I would also like to thank everyone that voted for me because I wouldn't be here tonight without the votes. We have a great group here tonight. I feel humbled as I look around the room. So many f familiar female and male racers celebrating and honoring the accomplishments of inductees both old and new. In 2012, I was fortunate to travel to London for the Olympics with my husband Alex and my son Ryan. While sitting in the stands, it really hit home seeing BMX live in an Olympic Games, and there's females actually competing in it. What an amazing progression of not only the sport of BMX, but females in the sport of BMX. Us old powder puffs, as we remember them, right, Misty, right? We're in total awe of, like, all the girl racers nowadays. Riders like Felicia Stanza, who's over there somewhere, Elise Post, Brooke Crane, Mariana Pajon, just to name a few. Sure, we may have paved the way, but these ladies are blazing the trails. Keep going, ladies. The sky's the limit. Yeah. Where's Toby Henderson? Hi, Toby. <laughs> so it's hard to believe how I got my start in the sport of BMX but I was complaining about a Raleigh ad, I think came up in BMX Action or BMX Plus. It featured Toby, but the ad mentioned that BMX racing was only for boys. <laughs> it wasn't your fault, but. Needless to say, I sent a letter to Raleigh demanding an explanation. That would be the picture with me in the Raleigh jersey too, by the way, as I flip through here. After all, I was a girl riding a 50-pound, no-name BMX bike around my neighborhood, jumping every curb and ditch I could find. And that ad really ticked me off, Toby. <laughs> about, a, about a month later, I got a re reply from Raleigh apologizing for the mistake on not mentioning girls, sending me that jersey, and giving me a listing of ABA tracks in Michigan. I started the very next week and was hooked on the sport of BMX, so hooked, I still compete today at times. I've also moved into a coaching role with the main focus on developing and training females on both traditional and supercross style BMX tracks. Woo! 
Being a female in the sport of BMX and on a factory team, traveling from race to race with a bunch of crazy guys was both mem memorable, and my parents must have been very trustworthy to let me go on my own, <laughs> as they were. I remember the days of my parents hosting the summer tour for the Midwest races, where we never had any less than three or four motorhomes in our driveway, camped out, different factor teams calling our house home for the week. Where's Miranda? He's not here. Okay. Anyways, needless to say, my parents weren't favorites in the neighborhood with 20 to 30 kids bunny hopping the neighbor's shrubs, jumping off docks with their bikes into the lake, letting off M80s in the middle of the night, and Miranda, Mike Miranda, was in constant trouble with the neighbors after making their beautiful landscape lakefront homes into his personal golf course and driving range. I'm sure a window or two was taken out at some point while he tried to perfect his golf game. We need Miranda here, right? Even after all that, my parents continued to host year in and year out because they loved the sport of BMX and the families involved. After all, we are all one big happy family in the sport. With that said, I would like to thank some people that have been very inspirational throughout my career. I would like to thank my family for always supporting my addiction to BMX racing. I wish my dad could be here, could have been here to have seen this. Hopefully he's watching over me right now. I wouldn't have gotten here without a sport and guidance. Richard Long, Gary Turner, and Gary Schofield, along with my 80s GT BMX family, both parents and racers, for believing in me and taking care of this young, impressionable female. My second parents, Don and Lake Lene Krupe, John and Joanne Carter, for always watching over me when my parents couldn't be there. My big brothers, Charlie Litsky, Clarence Park, sorry, Clarence Perry, and Charles Townsend, who's being inducted tonight. Where's he at? There's he at there. Big brother. Waterford Oaks BMX, and especially the Burnett and Zudoff family, along with the many volunteers who have helped give us kids a place to race. Chris Jeffries and Brian Barlow, who were local pros that helped build my confidence and riding ability, taking their clinics when I first started out racing. Andy Sperling, who ran the Columbus Schwinn team. The Bob Tedesco family, who I hope to see standing up here one day too. Older female racers, such as Kathy Shacko, Debbie Calso, Misty Dong, Wicked Wendy Endman, just to name a few that I looked up to and studied how they rode to perfect my riding skills. Bill Ryan at Supercross BMX for always treating me like family and telling me I always have a place on his team no matter how long a break I take. Brad Davis and the whole Motor City BMX family. My husband Alex and my son Ryan for supporting my efforts in everything I do. I love you. I'm done. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm under time. <laughs>